Hello, I'm Taj, digitally known as Tropic Vibes, the host of Nifty Business, where we highlight NFTs and explore Web 3.0 as we move from pure speculation to creating real world value. So many times we put the highlight on projects that are doing all sorts of shenanigans, just bad things, shortcomings of them and their founders. But today I want to really put the highlight and the spotlight on a project that is doing some amazing things. Leadership needs to stick to a plan, yet be willing to be flexible and adjust as needed. So today we're going to take a look at a project that has made some amazing pivots since minting. So for starters, I want to put it out there that I hold two of these NFTs and I have invited people to come into the project. So I'm just letting you know that up front that I'm not talking about this in hopes to increase my bag or anything of that nature because I speak about all sorts of projects, even projects that I have lost on, projects that I'm not happy with the direction that they're going with. However, with this one, I just want you to know that this is a project I follow closely because I am a part of the community. And of course, I'm speaking about the Bulls and Apes project. And I've covered a lot about them, especially pre-mint as far as interviewing the founder, Anthony. That was the very first interview I did on the show. And it was during that interview that I actually decided that I was going to mint. I had no intentions of minting until speaking to him. But speaking of the mint, there was a pivot that they made right off the bat. The day that I did that interview, they delayed the mint because that was the time when the Accutars mint happened. And they had a refund mechanism that was built into this project that allowed people to get their ETH back after 30 days up to 180 days. So there was a six month guarantee in this project. Well, right before they were supposed to mint, there was that Accutars mint where basically all the funds from the mint was locked into the smart contract because they never had the thing audited and they never checked to see how having funds locked away from the team so that there couldn't be a possibility of a rug pull could go wrong and all of those funds were locked away so of course there was no rug pull but the team never got those funds now as a result the bulls and a's project delayed their mint had the thing triple checked and all sorts of different things so that was pivot number one at least that was publicly known by me anyways then the second pivot that they made right away was based on a response from the community because that six month guarantee as far as being able to get a refund, that was specific to the minting wallet. However, people had made their concerns known that they like to mint from a burner wallet then transfer to a hardware wallet or a more secure wallet that they did not mint from. And because of that, they added in a four hour window, I believe it was, so that a way you can move from one wallet to the next during that period and you could still have that guarantee. Or even if you bought on the open sea, as long as it was just one transfer, that guarantee still stood place as long as it was not minted more than four hours ago. So that was an interesting pivot that they added into the project. Then once the project launched, people started to unveil their traits and things started to get a little bit popular. People started to start their trait groups. They decided to have certified trait groups that were supported by the project. That was not in their initial roadmap. That was something that they saw that the community was organizing trait groups and they were setting up their own factions and projects and discords and trying to do their own charities and things of that nature. And the project decided to support that and add that into everything that they're doing. So that was another pivot. But recent developments that I've heard within the last week or so was even more interesting to me. This was a major pivot, and I thought this was just interesting, especially considering that this was not on the original roadmap, but looking across the board at any project, I've never really seen anything like this. So I'm gonna highlight some of their tokenomics and a pivot that they made recently, just this week, at least it was became public this week, and I found out about it in a Twitter space. They have Tokenomics Tuesdays. So as far as the tokenomics goes, I'm going to give a brief summary. A lot is going on here, and I just highly recommend that you can go to their website, their Discord, or their Twitter to really figure out all of this stuff, or just tune into their spaces, Tokenomics Tuesdays, or any of their Bulls and Apes spaces. But in summary, just doing a crash course on the tokenomics for, for this collection, this is how it works. And I think it is just an unique, very interesting business model and how they're doing all of this. But the Genesis Bulls, which is the ones that we minted, they automatically yield a token called methane token or meth token because that whole thing comes from the gas that bulls pass. Well, that is called methane. Well, in this, the token is called meth. So 10 per day is generated by holding one of these bulls. You don't have to stake it. You don't have to do anything of it. Just by having it in your wallet, it automatically generates that. And then you decide to claim it from the project and have those tokens come into your wallet whenever you feel like it. So that is a very interesting thing. But going forward, they even added God Bulls, which is another level. So you have the Genesis Bulls with the regular Bulls. 
Those are 10. But then there's God Bulls, and I'll get to that in a second. Those actually yield 20 meth tokens per day. And the initial mint of the 10,000 had a few God Bulls sprinkled in, but there's also a way to get these God Bulls, and that's where things get really interesting. This was all in the roadmap. This was there from day one. This was known. So with that, they had these incubators where you breed these bulls. Now, this might sound complicated, but there's four different guilds, northwest, east, and south. So if you have two bulls within the same guild, so two north bulls, two east bulls, south bulls, west bulls, and I just totally messed up. The compass just went all over the place. But you have two from the same guild. They can breed with each other by having an incubator, and you can use one of the three breedings for that particular bull to then produce a teen bull. And that is basically a free mint that anyone that is holding these bulls can get because you're not buying that with ETH from the project as a separate mint or anything. You're just yielding those tokens and then able to mint that free NFT that you could turn around to use to further advance within the game and get more tokens. Or you can just sell those on OpenSea just as any other NFT and they are selling right now a little bit more than half the price of the Genesis bulls itself. So with that, each bull, as I said, has three breedings. But in order to get those God Bulls that I was speaking about, so a few lucky people got those upon mint. However, the majority of people that will get these God Bulls, a total of 500 will be in the entire collection. By using five teen bulls and a thing called a merger orb, to get a God Bull. Now, I'm not going to go into all of the details as to what you need to get that, but just know you need five Teen Bulls according to the rules that are in there, plus this Merger Orb to get a God Bull. That was there from day one. That was in the plan. It is in their white paper. It is on the website. It was in their Twitter spaces. It is in their videos. Everything that has been there from day one, it was always there. Now, the pivot that takes place is as things start to get very interesting, what we found out about it this week is because remember, I just said out of those five teen bulls, one of those has to be burned. So you start with five to get that God bull, but then you end up with four. This thing was set up to be deflationary. If all of the teen bulls mint out by using those tokens, those meth tokens and the breeding process and all of that, that just breeze through very quickly, there's supposed to be 12,000 minted. However, because you're burning one per God bull, you're going to end up with a deflationary collection. It's going to go down to 9,000. So 3,000 of those are going to be burnt. But here's the thing. Some awesome ones might end up burnt. They might end up in the burn while only to find out that it was really cool. Out of everything that was minted out, that might have been one of the only ones of a particular trait or whatever it might be. But the person who originally burned it had no clue. And that one is going to be locked away and no one can claim that. Well, that was according to the original plan. Well, here's the thing that they came up with based on discussions with the community and just an idea that they came up with is that they want to give that God Bull a little bit more utility. And what they came up with is giving it a power. So not only is it gaining those 20 meth tokens every single day, it's going to be charging up with power. Not sure exactly when this is going to roll out, but it is in the near future. So that God Bull is going to be getting those 20 meth tokens as well as energy or power that is just being added up over time. And when there's enough energy, that God Bull can then go and resurrect one of these burnt teens. So if something that was just awesome, maybe it was like a unique one, the only one of that kind that had a particular clothing style or hairstyle or whatever it is. And for whatever reason, people didn't know that maybe they burnt it early when there was only half of the collection. Because right now, I think there's about a third of the uh, teen bills that have shown up already. So let's say the people that are burning them right now have no idea how rare something is and they ended up burning it. Well, In the future, somebody can resurrect it and bring it back. But here's the catch. Since it is a deflationary connection and they only have it so that there's 9,000 in there, well, you're going to have to sacrifice one of those teen bulls that you already have to bring back this other burnt bull if that makes sense. So it's a one-for-one swap. But this is where things get even a little bit more interesting. Because this god bull that has that energy brought back that teen bull Some of that energy is going to rub off on the Teen Bull. So now that resurrected Teen Bull is going to be able to generate tokens because the Teen Bulls do not have any meth tokens as they sit in the wallet. It's not earning those 10 tokens or those 20 tokens like the Genesis Bulls. However, a resurrected Teen Bull is going to earn five meth tokens per day. So half of what a Genesis Bull would as a pair 
compared to the zero of the regular teen bulls. So that's very interesting to say, none the least. But an additional utility that they also added to the god bull, which is going to be going forward, is they're going to have this breeding replenishment. Because remember I mentioned that there are three breedings and these bulls can only breed three times? Well, the way this is going to be, this one of the things that the powers and the energy of that god bull can do is restore those three breedings. It's because if you notice, some of these that are on the market, maybe they're already breeded out, they have no breedings left, or they have one or two, those are going to be selling less than the ones that have three breedings left. So if for whatever reason you used up all of them and you happen to have one of these and you want to replenish it, you can then use those god bull's powers to replenish it. So that is very interesting to see. That was not in the plan. It is something that they added. And that's pretty cool because somebody might have a, a a bull that they really like, but they don't want to waste the breedings because they know it's going to devalue in the sense that it's not going to sell for as much on the open market considering the fact that it's already bred out. So this replenishment can do that. You can still breed that bull and still replenish it later down the line. So that's very interesting to see that you don't have to get rid of that thing thinking that it's going to be devalued and what have you. So enough about the project and all that stuff. The lesson to take away from here that I thought was just really great of how they're pivoting. They're listening to the community. They're solving problems as they come up. These are not necessarily things that were in the roadmap they thought of beforehand. But once they saw that it popped up, guess what? They came up with a solution. They creatively implemented it. And they came up with a system and a way to get over this and to roll it out to the project. So this is actually not the first time that they even thought of this stuff. Because remember I said that the whole minting process with the guarantee and adding that four-hour window for a transfer, that is something that they threw in there. But also, even how all of this breeding and the merging and all that stuff, someone noticed that you could gamify it by making a corner of the market by collecting all of those orbs and all of those trinkets or whatever you want to call them in order to play this game and this breeding mechanisms and working up to the god bull. And someone could just gobble up all of those merger orbs and incubators for very cheap and be able to not even play out the rest of the game, but then sell those on the open market after gobbling up all of those and storing them for themselves and make a killing. So they made this adjustment so that it's not going to be one for one. There's going to be way more incubators and way more orbs than are needed to play the game. So no one person in theory can corner the market and all of that stuff and basically name their price and put it out there that basically if you want to get one of these things, you're going to have to pay an arm and a leg for it. No, everyone can still play the game and that is something that they added in based on observation and people noticing that they could gamify the thing and try to figure out a way to lock out everybody. So very interesting things. And the main reason why I'm highlighting all of this is just showing that good leadership is just fundamentally necessary for a great business. And this model right here, all of these things that I just mentioned, I mean, they have a whole team. They have one guy, the tank man, as they call him, that all he does is, well, I shouldn't say all he does, but his main focus is the tokenomics and the gamification of all of this stuff, which is basically like a finance degree. This is like an economist, basically. Then he's figuring out how this economy within this project, this bulls and apes world, is going to work, and that is what he's working on. Then, of course, Anthony and the other guys on the team, they're doing all sorts of other things, whether it is they are rolling out the utility for the project, rolling out the different partnerships, even one of the perks for holding this thing is you can become an accredited investor that gets to invest into OpenSea. They have a certain amount of spots open. So basically, normally for a company that is not publicly traded because OpenSea is a private company. You need to be an accredited investor. You need to know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody within the finance world and get that inside door. But because you are on the inner circle of the Bulls and Apes project, if you go through the application process and you are put into this thing, you can invest into OpenSea. This is pretty crazy. That was something I didn't even know was a part of the project. And I don't have the funds to do that anyways right now. But I was, when I heard that, I was like, wow, there's a lot going on here. So all of that to say this, although this is an NFT project, you can take some great business notes from this and see what they're doing, pivoting, adjusting as needed, and apply this to literally anything. I don't care if you're selling tiles, soda, or stocks. This lesson is applicable to that business. And I think that is a great place to land the plane here. After all, I got through an entire episode speaking about all this stuff in Ethereum-based project, and the only merger that was mentioned was the Orb. 
Rumor has it that there's another merger somewhere in the news, but hey, who knows? So as far as news goes, though, if you are interested in a lot more stories that I possibly don't even make a full episode about because there's a lot going on and some of these stories are just really not enough to make a full episode about, but they're very interesting, very fundamental as far as what's going on in the business world and the Web3 ecosystem, I put out a newsletter and you can get that for free by signing up at niftybusinessweek.com or if you go to my Twitter page right on the top, you can definitely see that please feel free to reach out to me anytime at tropic vibes on twitter contact information is in the show notes but i just want to thank you for taking time to listen to this as we're learning and building web3 together so until next time later the nifty business show is not investment advice it provides insights and information within the space as with anything please do your own research before making a decision whether you're making an investment or a purchase